evening, I am going to present some workability and disadvantage claims on behalf of the native side. So, first of all, the affirmative side argues for a schedule switch, and their construction of the case is, has oversimplified the issue, and moving marijuana from Schedule 1 to Schedule 3 is not as easy as looking at potential benefits and assessing the number of deaths that have been documented. Instead, they need to be assessed on a case-by-case -case basis. as noted by the American Journal of Psychiatry. They suggest that in cases where they examined negative effects of marijuana use in, for medicinal purposes, doctors need to assess aggressively managing cannabis use in patients at high risk for psychosis, especially those already suffering from psychosis, as the affirmative mentioned, they will have increased uh, experiences of, those, of such psychosis. Secondly, doctors need to be um, appraised and need to be uh, reprimanded for prescribing or recommending medicinal cannabis um, when it has iatrogenic or psycho psychotoxic uh, effects on the patients, basically meaning that it's intended to have a positive effect but instead has a negative effect, which is often the case as noted in studies by the American Journal of Psychiatry. So altogether, that's just to say that it would not work so easy as to move the schedule, marijuana from Schedule 1 to Schedule 3. Um, secondly, as previously noted, the dosage is not easy to trace or measure. As noted by the affirmative side, there is a difference between smoking marijuana and inhaling the combustion products which are often associated with the uh, therapeutic benefits, such as decreased anxiety. Um, and that is very different from ingesting the product, which is, as they mentioned, in topical ointments and other edible forms. However, the same benefits that can be produced from those products are already available via dronabinol and nabiline. Uh, so basically, there is no way to regulate the dosage of marijuana via topical creams or edibles or other uh, marijuana smoking, ingesting methods that are not already accessible through medical research and scientific extractions. Uh, this is backed up by um, the medical marijuana by a report done by the JAMA Network claiming that uh, medical marijuana is a cart before the horse, a horse being a Trojan horse that is really trying to usher in capitalistic measures to sell marijuana and open it up for recreational use as opposed to its claimed medicinal uses that the affirmative argues for. So those are two workability In addition, I have some disadvantage arguments, mostly concerning the negative effects in which there are both long and short term effects of increased psychosis, dependency, and withdrawal, as noted by the AMA, that's the American Medical Association, and the Journal of Psychiatry. Um, these risks are highly increased in people who already have uh, psychosis. Um, problems and it's difficult to assess how such patients could benefit from using marijuana before more studies are done to, to show how it might. Additionally, there are public risks 
um, not just individual risks of psychosis. It's noted in an article about the regulation of medical marijuana, done again by the American Medical Association, that uh, typical delivery mechanisms are done by inhalation and oral consumption uh, in very concentrations of THC, which do have inherent health risks. Instead, they would suggest a policy that would only be fair if it allowed the prescription and dispensing of THC but disallow the use of marijuana for therapeutic purposes until more information is available. Those therapeutic purposes are the ones that the affirmative is arguing for through things like topical oils and basically just legalization of marijuana, um, as opposed to the already available extractions of THC that my colleague has mentioned earlier. Um, finally, the American Academy of Pediatrics suggests that legalizing uh, marijuana or simply moving it from Schedule 1 to Schedule 3 would give the public an increased perception of acceptability, which would have negative effects on youth. And they suggest that if marijuana were to be legalized, restrictions on the sale and advertising of the substance to young people would prove daunting meaning that despite aims to only provide it to medical patients who could benefit from it, the public might hurt from the use of the drug by adolescents and in recreational purposes through abuse of prescriptions, especially since the dosages, dosages cannot be traced. And that's it for workability and disadvantages. Thank you.